Welcome to Jacksonville, Florida, the largest city in the Sunshine State. Meet 13-year-old Tristan Bailey, a loyal friend, a gifted athlete, and a lover of Starbucks. She went to Patriot Oaks Academy in St. John's, Florida, along with other gifted teens. She was a dedicated cheerleader and loved it so much that she decided to continue doing it throughout high school and college. Everything changed one morning when the little girl was found missing by her parents. This is the photo the St. John's County Sheriff's Office wants you to take a close look at. Tristan Bailey is missing. Deputies say she was last seen during the overnight hours at the Amenities Center in the Durban Crossing subdivision. But the search is now expanding to a nearby park. And that is where Brianna Ray Turner joins us live with the latest. Brianna. Yeah, Jeff, I'm here at Veterans Park in St. John's County. Now, I just want to go quickly over here because the search group, um, they're volunteering. These are fit community members from uh, the Durban community. Um, now, take a look if you can, you can zoom in a little bit more, DJ. Uh, they're about to start their search right now. They're trying to find Tristan Bailey, 13 year old girl who was reported missing by her family this morning at 1 a.m. at the Durban Amenity Center. Now, um, you know, again, so many families out here. You know, I talked with one family who says their kids went to school um, with family. And they still can't believe something like this happened. You know, um, they've been living here for about 12 years now, and they said never uh, has a child been missing. Um, uh, the St. John's County Sheriff's Office says Bailey was last wearing a white cheerleading skirt and a dark colored skirt um, shirt. So if you have any information about the current whereabouts or have seen Bailey, please contact your nearest local law enforcement. On May 9th, Sunday morning, Mother's Day, her mom and dad were already up making breakfast. Everything was going well, and they had no reason to suspect that something happened to their Tristan. Mrs. Bailey went to wake up her daughter around 10 a.m., but to her surprise, she wasn't in her room. The parents went on high alert, and the mom reported the missing daughter to police. The community that they lived in had no history when it came to crimes. They lived in Durban Crossing, an exceptional community that is reminiscent of days gone by when kids played outside and laughter echoed through the streets. This is known as a neighborhood that doesn't see a lot of police activity or crime. Definitely no kidnapping or murder. Being very tight-knit, everyone knew each other and they acted like they were friends. Judging from all the images, all of the people look like they're part of an upper middle class and are well-mannered. So her mom reports her daughter missing, and the entire community gets involved at that point. Investigators later said they were so impressed by the support of the neighborhood. People were making flyers and helping to find the girl any way they could. Finally, on one security camera, Tristan Bailey was seen walking in the street around 1.15 a.m. She must have snuck out of the house because that would be too late an hour for her parents to let her go outside. She was walking through the parking lot of an amenity center that they had in the area with one of her friends, 14-year-old Aiden Fucci. Different security cameras showed them walking through the neighborhood and into a wooded area of town. A classmate of Tristan and Fucci, whose name isn't mentioned, probably because they are a minor, told St. John's investigators that the pair had been hanging out at his house and left together around 1 a.m. It seemed the two wanted a little bit of walking in the moonlight. Nothing happened for some time, or at least the security cameras didn't catch anything. But three hours later, investigators saw Aiden walking out of the wooded area, but this time he was alone, no sign of Tristan. After seeing the footage, police went directly to Aiden's house, and they took him to the station for questioning, right after asking him to show them the route that he and Tristan took. While in the police car, he took out his phone, took multiple pictures of himself, and added the caption, Hey guys, has anybody seen Tristan lately? We're, we're having fun in a f***ing cop car. Yep. Tristan. What's up, guys? Yep. Tristan, if you f***ing walk out the damn... When you see this in a... Fucci's cousin reported that he was usually at her house multiple times a week. The female minor told investigators the last time she had seen her cousin was Thursday, May the 1st, but said that she had spoken to Fuji after he sent the photo of himself from the backseat of the patrol car. The photo was quickly shared among all their classmates. 
When asked if she had ever witnessed any odd behavior from Fuchi, detectives say his young cousin stated that Fuchi once told her that he might go to jail sometime in his life. But then, he suddenly had a change of attitude. While still in the car, reports state that Fuchi at one point began crying and punched the back of the seat saying, I'm going to get arrested for this bullshit. It seemed that he wanted to appear innocent, but when the police searched his bedroom, they found pieces of clothing with the girl's blood on them. And apart from that, they also found different satanic drawings in his room, disturbing images of girls with X's on their genitals and their limbs being cut off. A truly horrific sight. When asked why it took him so long to get home, Fuchi told detectives that he walked around alone for a while, telling deputies that he kept walking until he got home between 3 and 3.30 a.m. He said he needed to clear his head. After a 16-hour search, her body was found. A old girl out of St. John's County ends in tragedy. Police believe they have found the body of Tristan Bailey Sunday evening after she was reported missing that morning. Our Renata DiGregorio live now at Bailey School. Renata. Lou, Keitha, we are at Patriot Oaks Academy, and this is where there will be extra grief counselors at the school today because this is where Tristan Bailey went to school. Now, the Sheriff's Department says she, her body was found in the immediate area of Veterans Park. That's where they called the press conference just yesterday. A volunteer search group had just gathered at the Durban Crossing North Amenity Center, which is where Bailey was last seen on midnight Saturday. But before they began their search, the police called that press conference at the Veterans Park. The Amenity Center posted on Twitter that it will be closed until further notice. The Sheriff's Department says they are still investigating and one of Bailey's close friends and cheer teammates says she talked with Bailey on Snapchat around 10 p.m. Saturday and that was just hours before she was last seen. I just, it makes me really sad that the last time I saw her was at cheer. And again, there will be grief counselors at Bailey School here at Patriot Oaks Academy. A lot of people reaching out online and then finding Bailey on TikTok, Instagram, and on social media and saying that they really hope that justice is served. Of course, another One of the neighbors who was out jogging decided to take a different route that day. As he was doing his workout, he saw the girl's body. It was in a bushy area near the cul-de-sac of Saddlestone Drive next to the lake. He called police immediately at the sight of the horrific image. Police arrived in no time and upon investigating saw that the girl had been stabbed numerous times. Police took the body in and called the parents to identify and to see if it was their daughter. Unfortunately, it was. She was fully dressed so there was no suspicion of rape or anything like that so how did the girl's body end up in that area with multiple stab wounds? Who would do that to a 13-year-old girl? The community quickly finds out what happened to her and, of course, they get involved. They started looking at personal security footage, trying to find out who the killer was and working hand-in-hand -hand with the police. Because her body was found near the lake, Authorities spent days searching the body of water. They didn't say exactly what they were searching for, but it was assumed that they were looking for the murder weapon. Aiden, being the primary suspect, was then sent to juvenile detention in St. John. His first court hearing was via Zoom, and footage of it had been released online. The judge said there was probable cause to keep the boy in detention, and also added that he would remain there until the end of May when they would be able to get the case going. After the boy's detainment, one of the investigators that had worked in the area specifically for over a decade said that he feels very confident about the case. He also added that it would be prosecuted to the fullest. This meant that they were convinced that they had the right suspect and that he did the horrible act of stabbing Tristan multiple times and taking her life. There was no doubt about it in the minds of the investigators. News of her death broke the boundaries of the community and spread nationwide. People were taking to social media to express their regret, but also their disgust toward Aiden. They used platforms like Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter to voice their own personal opinions. Of course, there were others who decided to take Aiden's side, 
saying that she deserved it and that the police should free him. How could someone root for the murderer? It just doesn't make sense to us. Others wrote different captions along the lines of, this is what I gotta do to get famous? Meaning they needed to kill someone to be known throughout the country. They were associating this horrible act with a way to become viral. Besides that, others were trying to say that more people were involved, like his friends, and that Tristan had been assaulted prior to murder. So many false rumors were going around the internet that police had to release an official statement to separate fact from fiction. Investigators then tried to figure out the motive, if he really did it, of course. The kids went to a very good school. It was in the top 5% across the United States. They came from very good families and had, presumably, an exceptional education. So what led to the horrific murder? Well, Aiden didn't actually grow up there. He moved with his mom just six months prior to the murder. So you can say that even though he was enrolled in the same school and lived in the same neighborhood as the others, he didn't necessarily have the same morals and values. According to the interview of one police officer, his opinion was that the 14-year-old kid was nothing more and nothing less than a cold-blooded killer. But momentarily, Aiden was innocent until proven guilty. Later in the investigation, the boy, despite still being a minor, was taken out of juvenile detention and arrested as an adult, pending his trial. When asked by reporters if Aiden would share detention space with the adults, one officer said that he will not, momentarily, even though he will be trialed as an adult. He will be kept separate from other inmates. But as you'll see later, that wasn't the case for long. His charges consisted of first-degree murder, a sign that the entire trial will be treated with the utmost seriousness. At that moment, it had been speculated that if he were to be found guilty, he would face life in prison with no possibility of parole. Of course, many people thought that that was inhumane, even though what he did to that 13-year-old girl was unforgivable. You may be wondering why did they decide to go so hard on him? Remember when we mentioned that little Tristan was stabbed multiple times? Well, it came out that that number was incredibly high. Tristan Bailey was stabbed 114 times. The killer was showing no mercy or remorse. Those were 113 opportunities to realize that what he was doing was wrong and stop immediately. The number of wounds distinctly indicate a clear purpose to kill. Upon searching the lake, divers eventually found the murder weapon. It was a typical folding button knife, and they were convinced that Aiden used it to stab his friend because part of the blade was actually missing and then later found lodged in the girl's skull in one of the stab wounds. Police think the only reason he stopped at 114 was that the knife broke. He may have caused more damage if the blade had remained intact. 49 of those stab wounds were concluded to be defensive, meaning that it happened in the hands, arms, and legs, indicating that Tristan fought for her life until her last breath. She didn't give up easily. She made his job as hard as she could. But in the end, it didn't matter. At this point, they had an overwhelming amount of evidence against Aiden, and they were very confident that the boy did it even though he still hadn't admitted he was the author of the crime. Other pieces of evidence were the statements from some of his friends. Police went around interviewing people, and according to them, Aiden was telling his closest friends and his girlfriend for some time now that he wanted to kill somebody. It seemed that he had an urge inside of him, an urge to end an innocent life without any reason at all. He allegedly also added that he would do it in 30 days and that he would drag his victim into the woods and stab him or her. These words came out of his mouth exactly a month before he took Tristan's life, so he kept his promise. His girlfriend's friend also said that she never liked the boy, stating he was numb and emotionless. Those are typical traits of a serial killer. According to the state attorney, there was no doubt in his mind that this is a case of first-degree premeditated murder. Aiden wanted to do it and planned it for some time, but he didn't have a victim in mind. Tristan was unlucky to be there at that moment. 
The victim's family talked to the media multiple times. They poured their hearts out about what happened to their daughter, and they wanted other little girls to hear about Tristan's story so they could be safe. Also, they aimed for other parents to understand that teens can also be dangerous and that they should keep an eye on their kids, especially if they're expressing strange behavioral traits. Even though there was a large amount of people who stood by them and sent flowers to their home and to Tristan's grave, others were sending them death threats. It is safe to say that because a majority of the people talking about the murder was comprised out of teenagers, some of them were the ones who threatened the family. Maybe because they didn't understand the gravity of the situation, or maybe because they thought it was funny. Police stepped up and publicly said that these threats will bring with them legal consequences. They did this in order to protect the already heartbroken family. Things took a weird turn. It seems that the mother of Aiden was arrested during the investigation on a felony charge of tampering with the evidence. She allegedly, after seeing her son was arrested, went into his room before the police started digging around and took his jeans that he wore on the night of the murder and washed them in the sink to remove the blood off of them. How did the police find out that she had washed the pair of jeans? Well, inside their house, his mom had set up security cameras and when the authorities took the clothes, they also confiscated the recorded footage, seeing the woman committing the felony. Inside the house, during the washing of the piece of clothing, there was another person who told Aiden's mom not to do that because she would get in trouble, but the woman didn't listen and proceeded to wash out the bloodstains. She looked stressed and ran around the house while still looking out the window. Remembering that this had happened before the body was found and supposedly she had no reason to be worried, they didn't know that Tristan was dead yet. She didn't spend much time in jail being released shortly after arrest. Later, information about one of his interviews at the sheriff's station had been released to the public. Aiden was there with his parents after questioning. The officer left the room. The family remained there, just the three of them and not knowing they were still being recorded, the two adults told Aiden that he needs to stick to his story. This might mean that they knew all along, ever since it all happened, but they decided to keep quiet. This is just our speculation. His story was that they had walked toward the woods. Fuchi admitted that Tristan did not turn onto her street. They had continued walking together towards the North Durban Parkway. When the two passed Leith Hall Drive, Fuchi told investigators that Tristan grabbed his penis, which made him pissed, and an argument ensued. That's when he told authorities that he had pushed her hard to the ground where she hit her head and left her there, according to the report. Another thing that happened during the interview was that Aiden was asked if he was wearing jeans that night. He responded with a positive answer, but immediately his mom intervened, saying that he was wrong that he was wearing khakis, trying to protect her son by lying about a detail that would prove crucial in his trial. But that couldn't have been the case. The body was found lying on her right side. Her cell phone, $20, and a cotton candy vape was found next to her. All of the items were covered in blood. Also, some writings were found on her ankles. On her left one was scribbled karma, and on the right one was a smiley face drawn with a pen. Now, if Aiden had left her there, and someone else had come along and killed her, wouldn't they have taken the belongings after that? It seemed that no one took Aiden seriously about his claims, and that the murder was partially his parents' fault. His girlfriend also said that he carried around knives with him and nicknamed the weapons Picker and Poker. When asked what the knives looked like, she allegedly described one of them as looking exactly like the one they found in the lake. Eventually, Aiden ended up sharing detention space with adults. The prosecution released a statement saying that they had a surprise witness for the trial from within the county jail. The identity of this inmate was not known, but it was presumed that he found out further information about the murder after Aiden maybe had said something to him or to other inmates. The prosecutor stated that they have 250 witnesses against Aiden. Whether he's innocent or guilty, he made quite an impression on such a large number of people that the authorities will bring to the stand in favor of the Bailey family. 
Before his routine pre-trial hearing, 14-year-old accused killer Aiden Fucci appeared on a video feed from the Duval County Jail wearing an orange jumpsuit and a confused expression, was led handcuffed into a room with a phone so that he could hear the court proceedings. He appeared frightened and looked around the room with a confused, dazed expression. He was acting like he didn't know where he was. I don't know how you demons, I don't know how you demons take my soul. You demons want to take my soul away. I don't know how you demons take my soul. I don't know how you demons take my soul. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? What are you doing? I see you in the What's going on? Why am I here? I just want to talk to my mom and dad. What's going on? 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 A guard came into the room and took the phone receiver off the wall and handed it to Fuji, who flipped back his long hair and continued to look disoriented as he held the receiver to his ear. Did the time he had spent in jail get to him? He then started rocking back and forth in his seat, looking around the room in confusion and muttering. At one point, he can be heard talking about demons, saying that demons will take his soul, and he was sure that they will. But it didn't stop there. He then asks what's going on before saying in a plaintive tone, Why am I here? I just want to talk to my mom and dad. What's going on? What's going on? Aiden Fucci's feed eventually ended, and his lawyer filed a speedy trial waiver, which most defendants do, and the case was passed on to October 28th. A forensic psychologist not affiliated with the case said that after watching the video of Fucci's behavior in the courtroom feed, he wouldn't be surprised if the teen receives a mental competency evaluation. The doctor said that Fucci looks disoriented and confused, and that it's hard to tell if he's faking mental illness or if he's really suffering from a mental disorder. From his perspective, it seemed genuine, given the pattern of behavior he displayed and from what else we know. D'Arenzio said that Fucci's previous patterns of behavior will likely play a part in the case. Attorney Gene Nichols, who was also not affiliated with the case, said that it would not be unusual to see a competency evaluation in a case like Fucci's, but that it could drag out the case. Young people often get evaluated before trial, and sometimes it can take months until a verdict is reached. At this time, the judge has not ordered Fucci to have his mental competency evaluation, and investigators have also not said if he suffers from a mental disorder. A separate hearing was scheduled for Crystal Smith, Fucci's mother. It was also passed until October 28th. She is still under investigation for tampering with evidence. On the 28th of October, another modification happened. Aiden Fucci waived his appearance in court. Fucci made quick appearances before his new pre-trial date was set for February 2nd. While the case is still under investigation, we could assume that given all the evidence, Aiden will likely get life in prison, but only time will tell. What sentence do you think he should get? Tell us in the comments below. If you found this story compelling, don't forget to like the video. 
Comment down below your take on it and subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification bell to stay up to date each time we reveal a new shocking case. Until next time, stay safe and keep your eyes peeled. You never know what's lurking in the shadows.